I'm Helen O'Leary and the title of the exhibition is Shelf Life of Facts. I came up with the title first before I came up with visualising what the show would be. And I like that idea of things that change, of, of facts that change, of, um, of paintings that change. They, they continually cannibalise themselves for me and um, I unravel things. I, I kind of work backwards. And I was thinking how we reconstruct textualize ourselves at different points in our lives and um, how we we put things away on shelves we put things on mantel I was looking at mantel pieces for this show how we kind of tidy up and put stuff up high and um, the kind of rummaging that makes a life and reconfigures a life and, and I suppose that's what I thought about this show. I knew I'd have to pack it in boxes. I knew I would have to reassemble it. And I knew I wanted to make the biggest history painting I could make. But it would all have to be taken apart and, and redefined on site. I think the real work that sustains me is, is from going up on the farm in Wexford. It's what my father did. We, we had electricity before anybody because he collected bits off the strand and built win windmills and built machines and potato sorters out of nothing. And I was barely out of the pram when he'd used the wheels to make a, um, a compressor out of a bit of a fridge and the pram wheels. And it was for the arrival of the tractor. And um, he died when I was very young. And the place was utopian when we grew up. It was, everything was handmade. He made boats, he made this, he sewed sails. And my mother, you know, the usual farm life. And then, it was like modernism hit. With It started with a tornado and a fire. And um, it was a fire first, we hit by lightning. And, um, and then there was a tornado and then he died. And then we started letting rooms and tourists had come in. And it was later when I was learning about modernism and learning about um, feminism that I, I realized the, the groundwork that was set for me, that the influx of tourists, the influx of new ways, the influx of the kind of banality of seeing bell bottoms in our cow house and um, um, things sent from abroad from well-meaning tourists that we had no meaning for, that they, they had no kind of real resonance in our lives, like neon frisbees or that we didn't know what they were, we thought they were lids. Um, we thought they were nice of them to think of us, but we didn't know how to use them. And, and that is the awkwardness that I look for in painting, that you can, you can have something and you don't know what it's for, but you'll bring it back into your life somehow. So I, I started as a still light painter the usual way. And then I was much more interested in when I take the still life down, the marks that will be left from it, you know, the kind of residue. And, and within that residue, I thought oh, maybe I can reuse this, all the mistakes, all the overruns, all the, um, the not quite sentences, maybe I can recontextualize them into a language that would have meaning for me. I've been making this work for a while. In the late 2008, you know, Ireland was coming apart. The economy was falling around us. I was in the middle of a divorce. And I ended up in Paris. And um, I found myself walking to the Museum of War a lot. And um, I'd look at all the flawed armor in, in the Museum of War. I'd look, at, I'd look at the armor with cannonballs through the heart. And I, <laughs> they seem to have real power for me. And I was thinking of things that don't turn out as planned or the systems that fail you and, or things that should, that go the wrong way, I suppose. And um, I started wanting paintings to be, to redefine how they stand up. You know, I consider myself a painter. When people say you're an installation artist, you're a sculptor, it just, just, just like nails on a chalkboard to me, it's, I'm a painter. And um, I start thinking of memoir. I start thinking about the farm. I start thinking about my mother and her fight to keep the land. And, and, and I was thinking about the anonymity and the voicelessness of being middle-aged and a woman. And I started thinking about the armor with the holes in them. And I wanted painting to kind of come out, be like a phoenix, be, be like a phoenix out of shreds, out of, out of being undone. And for these armor plates, these chest plates, and initially I'd make them the size of a chest. I thought that was about right. 
And then I wanted the size of a wall. <laughs> um, so I started thinking about a painting that would be a history painting that wouldn't just be memoir. You know, I, I, I read memoirs, but you, you learn about the world that way. It's not just about the person. I didn't want it to be about, oh, poor me. Um, I wanted it to be about the world as I knew it through kind of a haptic sense. And I start thinking about making paintings as big as Kiefer. You know, I, I wanted to be, I wanted paintings bigger than Kiefer. <laughs> but I do them bit by bit. I do them in a very intimate way. Um, and I wanted them that you could piece together a language out of false starts or out of small moments. And I consider the small paintings that stand within it, they're like color cards or they're, they're They've taken a few hits, but they're still solid. You know, they're very solid. And I wanted them to be egg tempera, which is the most precious and kind of beautiful surface. So they're like skin, they're like people, they're like, they're like um, very human to me. And it's always about humanity for me. It's always about, um, about strength, about vulnerability and strength at the same time. And, um, and beauty, it's always about beauty as well. I, th I think if the work doesn't make me laugh, at some point when I'm making it, it's failed, I get too serious, I get caught too, too caught up in myself. And I want that to come through. I want the humor and the kind of subversiveness of, um, of the culture we are as people and the kind of tenacity we are as people. And I want my audience to kind of understand that. You know, it's, um, I'll pick a rubber band off the ground and I'll think that's great, you know, or um, I'll, make a, I'll make a long stick warp through days of work, days and days and days of work. And for me, I, I see people and they're with their rulers and their exactitude and their this and their that. And I, um, I was kind of reacting against that, you know? I, was, I, I wanted humor in the work. I wanted it to take itself very seriously on the one hand, but to laugh at itself, the, the, to the absurdity of it in, in another. And yet I want them very human. I want the little pieces to be portraits, like a portrait, like a sea of people. Um, Bruegel was somebody I always looked at as a child. I, I won a book when I was 12 of Bruegel, it was some Texaco thing. I got a peep, when I look, think of it now, I still have it, but a um, little paperback, you know. And um, I love the kind of non-hierarchical sense within it and the peasants that were in it. I thought, my God, there's a portrait of us, you know, that's who we are. Um, I'm always, I'm always rummaging back through history. I'm always rummaging back. Like I, I work with um, a bow maker. He makes bows for, fiddle, for fiddlers. <laughs> and I, I use these offcuts because I love the kind of resonance of that. I love, I love the, the kind of history that the wood holds. Um, for me, living abroad, it's, it's always my you know, little, little stash of Pernambuco and the magic of that. Um, so I, I want it to be read on many, many different levels. You know, I, I, I use ceramics, I use silver, I use gold, I use platinum. Um, I want to be polyvocal and I want to have many audiences as well.